Whilst Isambard toiled beneath the Thames, he started a private journal, a record of his innermost thoughts. In a letter addressed to a close friend, though never sent, Brunel reveals his fears. I conceal things from myself, and it was to get rid of this load of secrets I had to keep that I imagined this staunch friend. But I think what's so interesting about his diary entries is it shows a great ability at introspection and actually quite ahead of his time in some ways. You know, today we would say to people, keep a diary of your thoughts and feelings so that you can work out your own process. And here you've got a man who's keeping a diary of his own process and he's actually trying to work it through. Yet I always have my fears. I keep the key always about me. The book itself in a strong box with a secure lock. But when from home, I am always afraid. But what's also interesting on top of that is that he keeps it locked away, not only secret from other people, but partially secret from himself. So I wonder at some level whether it's a little bit unpalatable that he has these weaknesses. You know, here I am in my own mind, this great man, and people admire me. What do I do with this other side of, of my personality? How do I reconcile the two? You can tell he's writing it without anyone else in mind. He doesn't think that people really are going to read this. Um, it gives you a real insight into what he's thinking, uh, the way he feels. It's completely different from the Brunel that we might imagine now. His journal also reveals Brunel's private conflict between his insecurity and his ego's desire for glory. As to my character, my self-conceit and love of glory vie with each other, which shall govern me. The latter is so strong that, even of a dark night, riding home when I pass some unknown person, I catch myself trying to look big on my little pony. Brunel very clearly shows that he has his public face. So, for instance, at late at night, he'll pass a stranger and he'll deliberately puff himself up to make himself look a little bit bigger. And then his, his private side, where he's almost racked by self-doubt and worry and talks about his fears that he's never going to make anything of his life. I think w with Isambard that you'd certainly see self-doubt and anxiety and I I'm not sure what I'm doing. And at the same time, real confidence and real almost borderline arrogance. I, you know, he talks about self-conceit and love of glory. He wasn't afraid to stand in the spotlight when it came to what he could produce and deliver. When it came to his work, he believed in himself. Isambard's growing professional and public self-belief soon developed into a flair for PR and the grand gesture. 